mm-hmm. in what way do you think that Pinterest is different to the other social platforms? So it's different because it's not geared towards socialization between individuals or groups of people in the way that we would on Facebook or Instagram, for example, by commenting and interacting with each other and forming into groups and all of those kinds of things. Right. Pinterest is a search engine. It's the, okay. it's the third largest search engine after Google and YouTube. And it is a place that people go to get inspiration and answers to their questions, not to socialize with other people. Welcome back to the Teach Traffic podcast with myself, Ilana Wexler. This is a show where we reveal the best tips, tricks and tactics to increasing your website traffic and then converting that traffic into leads and sales. We also discuss what's working right now in the ever-changing world of web marketing so you can apply it to your business. Welcome back to another episode of Teach Traffic. I'm your host, Alana Wexler, and today we are going to be talking all about Pinterest. And truthfully, I have not spent a lot of time on the Pinterest platform, be it organic social reasons or even as an ad platform so but i know for many business owners that they get really really good results from pinterest so i have invited a guest on today's show a woman under the name of caroline partridge uh, from socialstrategymum.com who mastered the art of pinterest through launching her first business which was an allergy related business which we sort of talk a little bit about on today's show but she really mastered Pinterest and getting traffic to her allergy business from the Pinterest platform. And we cover in today's episodes, if you're a complete newbie, uh, what you need to do to get started to set up a business Pinterest account, uh, strategies about how to rank in the algorithm, because uh, according to Caroline, Pinterest is the third largest search engine, which I had no idea about. And because essentially it's a search engine, Pinterest, and we talk about, you know, sort of getting started strategy. So if you haven't considered Pinterest as a possible platform to market your business and generate traffic to your website, which is always what I advocate, all these other platforms are a great traffic generating strategy. So definitely don't build your business on there, but you always want to be sending people to your website then um, have a listen to what Caroline and I talk about. If you want to download our handy PDF summary of this episode, where we'll go through kind of the highlights that we talk about in today's episode, so you don't have to write them down, you can head on over to teachtraffic.com and we will make that resource available for you there so that you don't need to furiously write down stuff, especially if you're in the car driving, like I know I listen to podcasts while I'm driving, you can just simply download that handy PDF that we will make available for you. Alrighty, so let's get stuck in today's episode. Welcome to another episode of Teach Traffic. Today I'm talking with a wonderful woman called Caroline Partridge and Caroline is an interesting person because she has learnt how to leverage Pinterest as a way of generating traffic to her business through her own business and now she helps people and I've invited her on today's episode to talk to her all about Pinterest, the basics of it, the intermediate aspects of it, and how it might be an appropriate platform for your own business. So welcome to today's episode, Caroline. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, me too, actually. So because I, full disclosure, I know nothing about Pinterest as a platform. I think I used it for the first time probably five years ago, and that was the last time I've used it. (laughs) So um, I am excited to learn all about the platform from you. I know a lot of people actually who get lots of really, really good results from it as well. So I know it's a platform which can be really good for certain types of businesses, and we definitely want to talk about that today. So um, yeah, why don't we start on firstly, why, no, actually let's start from a different point. Do you want to give us a quick five minutes about who you are and, uh, and what you do? 
Yeah, okay. Uh, so the short version is that two years ago, I started my first business called Aussie Allergy Mom, where we support uh, parents of children with food allergies uh, through workshops, courses, online support, those kinds of things. And that business was born out of my own personal experience, having been gifted a child who had a lot of food allergies. Uh, so I built I like that the, business. I like the way you said gifted a child. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the reality is that I wouldn't even be here today if I didn't get her six years ago. Yeah. So this kicked me into the world of online business purely because I wanted to help other people with the stuff that I was struggling with. Yep. And I was using Facebook and Instagram and doing all the things and being all the places. And so through that business, I discovered Pinterest, which was not a platform that I had personally been a user of, but I knew that it was a platform that a lot of people went to uh, for recipe ideas and information and basically answers to their questions. Right. And so, yeah, so I started to do some work uh, and put up some, you know, posts and pins onto the platform. And I thought I'll just see how this goes and whether it's worthwhile. And I was adding things consistently. I was pinning my blogs onto there. I was pinning my free resources onto there, doing that kind of thing. And dutifully checking my Google Analytics. And I noticed that there was quite a jump in traffic. And so I drilled down, obviously, to see where that traffic was coming from. And a much larger percentage of my traffic than I expected was coming from Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hmm, this is interesting. Not really what I was expecting. And so from there, I thought, well, this is happening and it's happened quite easily. What can I be doing to better harness that traffic, to make sure that it's actually the right traffic that's coming to my site from Pinterest and that I'm really drilling down and making sure that it's my ideal customers and clients that are finding me through Pinterest. And so that was a journey of understanding the platform and getting training on the platform. And there, going back maybe 12, 18 months ago, there wasn't a heap of information out there on using Pinterest really for your business. It was more the platform that people were just on to find inspiration for things and to create pretty boards of stuff that they're never going to do. So it was a case of working out how that could be part of my business. And then from there, um, people were watching what I was doing and other businesses started to ask me for advice. And so it ended up building a second arm of the business called Social Strategy Mum, where I help other mums in business with building their social media uh, presence and building the traffic to their websites through these different social media platforms, of which I include Pinterest, but it is different to the other social platforms in okay. a different way. So let's let's touch on that point. In, mm -hmm. in what way do you think that Pinterest is different to the other social platforms? So it's different because it's not geared towards socialization between individuals or groups of people in the way that we would on Facebook or Instagram, for example, by commenting and interacting with each other and forming into groups and all of those kinds of things. Right. Pin Pinterest is a search engine. It's, yeah, the, okay. it's the third largest search engine after Google and YouTube. And it is a place that people go to get inspiration and answers to their questions, not to socialise with other people. And that fundamental difference between Pinterest and something like Facebook or Instagram can be where people trip up because the content needs to be geared towards the purpose of the platform. Mm -hmm. So when you say it's a search engine, there must be then some whole ranking strategy that comes with ranking in that search engine? Yes. So there is an algorithm working in Pinterest uh, and it is triggered by keywords in a very similar way to the keywords in Google. Okay. So what we're looking to do is to use those keywords to get our content out to a larger audience of people 
that are looking for the types of things we are posting content about. Okay. Let's just backtrack a second for a little bit. Are there certain types of industries or businesses which you think are typical or really successful on Pinterest versus others which aren't? Yes, I do think there are because it tends to be particular types of people that are using the platform and then it tends to be some particular topics that get the most traffic for that platform. Okay. So it really, it really is a platform where people go to find recipes. Mm -hmm. That is a big one. So if you're a business that is putting out recipes or something to, to do with food, there is a big audience looking for recipe inspiration. There's a big audience looking for fashion and style inspiration, whether that be personal style or whether it be moving into the space of interior design. Mm -hmm. So that is another big area where Pinterest is very popular for people to go on and find those inspirations, find, you know, pin a board of amazing ideas that they could use to make their home look better or things that they could be wearing. So that's another big group. And then there's also a, a quite large number of followers on Pinterest that are looking for business type information and business inspiration, particularly in the home business sector. Interesting. I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah. And there's a lot of information on that platform about starting businesses and um, marketing businesses and those kinds of things. Okay. So my impression of it though, in my very limited experience with it is that it's a very visual platform. Yes, it is definitely quite a visual platform and there are some, some really common themes to the visuals of the pins that tend to rank higher in the algorithm and convert better to people actually clicking it through to a website. Okay. okay. Why, why don't we touch on that point now and sort of what makes a pin or a post more clickable than one that's not? Yeah. So generally the pins that are the most clickable are the ones that have clear, large font because generally people are accessing Pinterest from their mobile phone. Okay. Pinterest gives the best ranking to images that are in a ratio of two to three. So they are taller than they are wide. And it, in doing that and seeing that on a phone, it can mean that it's actually quite a small image. So big font, um, clear font, clear colors, and often um, the best graphics rather than complicated images or photos are more the style of a geometric design, mm. particularly when you're in the business space. In the space of interior design and wardrobes, it's very clean photos with good contrast and easy to read text. And in the space of recipes, it's pretty pictures of food, but still being able to clearly read the text, okay. even though you've got a pretty picture. So when you say text on there, I mean, from, let's say, the, the business inspiration yeah. strategies, I mean, are, are people putting quotes on there or what are they actually putting on their images? Generally, um, you do see some quotes, but normally you will see an image and a text maybe in relation to a blog post, so it will be the title of something. And the idea is to capture, obviously, a person that's interested in that topic and they're going to click through and read what you have written about that. So the headline um, of whatever their content is about. Yeah, that tends to generally be um, – that tends to generally do well. The thing about the quote type posts is that people will repin them to their boards, but they're not as likely to click on them and then have them move as traffic through to a website Got because it. what are they tracking through to and why would they want to click? Mm -hmm. So the best posts for getting website traffic are your website content like your blogs where you can actually bring someone through onto your site and give them a really good piece of quality content. And then off the back end, 
hopefully be thinking then about conversion strategies across your website in order to bring them in either as, you know, with a lead magnet in as a free kind of thing or whether you're bringing them towards a sale. I understand. Is it the kind of thing that you would be only pinning your best content or as a business owner, is it part of your content distribution strategy that you would pin all your content? So I always suggest to businesses when they're getting started that they, if they've been in business for a while and they've actually got quite a lot of content, that they really do focus on the content that they have seen the best results from previously. Right. Um, that does not mean, though, that there isn't a place for all of the content. And so if someone's more in the startup phase, then I would suggest to them that as they're creating content and putting it out across social media on different channels, that they also go ahead and put that content out onto Pinterest as well. Right. Um, but it, it definitely there's different strategies and different ways that you can do it and you have the opportunity to pin content to different boards. And so I always suggest to, to the people that I'm talking to that they have a board where they do share the best of their brand and that they have a board that actually says that and that they have that board towards the top of their profile so that if someone comes looking for them because of a piece of content that they've seen that's been quite good, they can easily find the best of their content right there in front of them. Oh, cool. That makes sense. Okay. So let's, um, let's backtrack for a second. Let's, let's assume somebody's listening to this going, yeah, okay. I can see how I can incorporate Pinterest into part of my marketing strategy and part of my traffic generating strategy. Let's say they're completely brand new and they don't even have an account. What what's the starting point? Do they would that person create a new account sort of under their business name or is it done under their personal profile? And like, do, do you kind of know where yeah. I'm going with this question? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, so there's there's really a whole strategy around this. My suggestion to clients is always that they start a new account in their business name, mm -hmm. and that they go into the settings and turn that Pinterest account into a business account because there are two types of accounts. You can have a personal account or you can have a business account. Okay. The ups, Sorry, sorry. I, was, I was just going to ask what's involved in turning an account into a business account? Literally the click of a button. Okay, that's good. But, but what you get in return is you get the analytics of what you're doing. So you can see what's being repinned how many followers followers you've got and what things they're pinning. You can actually see what you're doing and basically whether it's working. Okay. The other thing that you get to do through a business account is that you can actually claim your website, um, which means that when you post and pin from your website, your all your website information will be attached to that pin. So people will be able to see your brand, they'll be able to see your logo, they'll see your web address, all of those kinds of things as well. And so that, that makes it worthwhile then to have a business account so that people can see that kind of information. Okay. And, and then as you go into the account, there is opportunities at every step to affect the algorithm with keywords. And so even just in the setup of your account, when you share, you know, the about or the description of who you are and what you do, what your brand is, your business is, you you can immediately even at that point start to use the keywords for your business and those keywords will be added to the keywords we're going to put in the boards that we're then going to put in the pins and it's basically a way of tripling up the strategy of ranking for the keywords that people are searching for that are related to what you do. I understand. And these keywords, are they are these the same kind of keywords that you would be using like on Google, for example, that you're optimizing for your SEO? Are these the sort of the same type of keywords or is there almost like a different keyword strategy which is specific for Pinterest? No, it's very much similar to Google. And generally when people are starting out, I suggest to them that they pay attention to and have done some research into the keywords that are ranking them for Google and be using those keywords in their Pinterest as well. Uh, it's a very similar idea of just people. People type in, 
questions or things that they're looking for inspiration on. And so we just want to make sure that we're using the language that they're using. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so we've created our business account. We've, t- we've click- clicked that button that says that we're a business account, put in our business details and keywords. Now I'm assuming we're ready to create a board. Is that correct? Yes. Is that pretty straightforward or are there any sort of tips and strategies and best practice with creating a board? Uh, so best practice for creating a board, well, it's, it's easy to create a board. It's literally just the click of a button to create the board and then you obviously need to give the board a name mm-hmm. and then you're going to want to give a, the board a description. And both with the name and the description, we need to be thinking about keywords. Probably the upside of Pinterest is that we can – stuff keywords a little bit more than we might do when we're trying to make sure that everything is very easily readable for Google because these descriptions are kind of in the back of the board and people don't generally see that description unless they particularly click to get more information on the board. So you can put a lot of keywords in the back there and people will often just have quite a few keywords separated by commas in the back there that are helping to drive that keyword strategy, if that makes sense. Yep, that makes sense. And is there any limit to the number of keywords that you can have at the back of a board? So there's a limit to the characters. Right. And this is the same right across the Pinterest platform. So when you put the information into the profile, when you put the information into the boards and the information into the pins, there is just a character limit and it's generally about 500 characters. But the other thing to remember is that people tend to only see the first two or three lines of what you've written. So the first two or three lines need to capture them and make them want to know more. And then you've got the opportunity up to the 500 characters to have more keywords in there. Okay. And would you say that, like, would you need your account to have sort of a a minimum number of boards in order for sort of your profile to be worthy of looking at? Like I just almost compare to like Instagram, for example, where an an account Mm -hmm. might have, you know, three posts and it might look a little bit lonely and deserted much like my Instagram account, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it, um, something's better than nothing, I have to say that, particularly if you're starting out. But generally, we see the best traction on accounts that have 15 or greater boards. Okay. So when I set up accounts with people, we tend to set up 15 to 20 boards. Okay. And okay. these boards don't all have to be absolutely directly related to your business. They can be things that are co-related to your business and areas that will be of interest to the customers and clients that you're working with in your business. So you want to give yourself opportunities to pin lots of different types of content. And so sometimes when I say 15 boards to people, they say, oh my God, but I only talk about two or three different things. Well, there's always ways to have different boards and we can pin the same pins to different boards and that means that more people are going to see them. Okay. Okay. But if we, the the whole strategy of categorizing things by boards is that, so they're sort of topics? Are they different topics? Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. But there's crossover with Pins. Yeah, okay. I guess uh, to give you an example for my social strategy mum Pinterest account, I have specific boards, say for Facebook marketing, Instagram marketing and Pinterest marketing, but then I have a general board uh, for social media marketing as well. Okay, I understand. Yeah. So how would that apply to your other business with the allergy mum? Yeah. Was, what was the sort of the strategy that you, you did for that? So uh, the way that I got into doing Pinterest for that was because I was doing a lot of recipes. And so I created um, quite a few different boards. So I had um, recipe ideas like for breakfast, a separate board for dinners. I had a separate board for desserts. Then I had different boards depending on the types of foods that people were avoiding. Mm -hmm. So I would have a board for dairy-free recipes, a board for gluten-free recipes, nut-free recipes. So that was how it got started and often recipes would fit into more than one category so I was able to pin them into the different boards. Um, And what I found was that people were looking 
for those recipes. They were coming onto Pinterest looking for recipe inspiration and ideas. And so they would click through those pins and move onto my website to get that recipe. And obviously I could then optimize their time on my website to have them moving to other pages and other areas and bringing them into the ecosystem of my business. I understand. Okay, so the idea um, is that people find the boards, within the boards they find the pins for let's yeah. say the the image of a certain recipe and then they click on that to get the full recipe therefore coming to your website exactly and what happens with the pins is that it's like it's a feed just like you have a feed on facebook or on instagram mm -hmm. and the algorithm prioritizes the feed based on the keywords and the things that this particular person has been looking for previously and will show them new content related to that. And so they will literally come onto Pinterest and if they're just on the main page that they come onto, they're just getting a feed of the pins that the Pinterest algorithm thinks they are most likely going to be interested in and they will see those and then have the opportunity to click on them. They can repin them to a board of theirs or they can click through them and head to the website. Okay, I understand. Does Pinterest give you sort of keyword information or, um, yeah, I guess information that you go, oh, okay, people are searching for X, therefore I'll create more of X or certain topics? Yeah, yeah not in the way that Google does. That's a shame. Um, yeah, you get really good analytics on which of your pins are the most popular. Um, and so I spend a lot of time looking into those pins and why it is that those pins are doing better than other pins. Um, but it, it doesn't, you don't get the level of keyword research available to you that you would with something like Google. Mm, interesting. It's funny, <laughs> like I don't see if I were to search on Google let's say for a, a gluten-free recipe you wouldn't see a Pinterest pin come up would you? Uh, not as much as you might see something come up from one of the other platforms no. Mm. Yeah it's interesting isn't it? No so it's a really platform based situation I guess um, which is a bit different to others so it really it's the people that are on that platform using that platform have you found that over the years your strategy has changed a bit? Like has the platform changed that like what you yes. used to do in the beginning and what you do now is completely different? Yeah, so originally when I first started using Pinterest, there was no algorithm driving the Pinterest feed. It was purely chronological. Right. And so the focus was on sharing content really regularly you know, throughout the day and throughout the week to be trying to be appearing at the top of the feed. Mm -hmm. Now it has an algorithm much more like the other social media platforms where it's trying to tailor content to the individual that's consuming the content based on their previous behaviour. Yep. Yeah. You mentioned before about the concept of followers. How does followers mm -hmm. come into, into play with Pinterest? Yeah, so there's the opportunity for people to follow um, the Pinterest accounts that they're consuming content from. What I would have to say is, though, that the follow account is not really indicative of the number of people that are consuming the content because there isn't so much of a drive towards pushing people to follow you as there might be on a platform like Instagram. Okay. People are still going to see your content if they're not following you. The one thing about the followers that are following you is that they see your content first and Pinterest pays attention to the way that they consume your content and that plays a role in the algorithm that underpins the feed of Pinterest. So generally I say to people not to worry so much about their follow account and the vanity metrics of the count and to be really looking further into the analytics of what um, what is getting people across onto their website. Okay, so on, on that in analysing the traffic that is generated from that platform, do you need to create trackable links for that or is it Google Analytics pretty good at picking up the traffic source 
etc. Yeah, so Google Analytics is is pretty good at picking up the traffic source, and I find that you can. It's it's good to get into the analytics of Pinterest and the analytics in Google at the same time mm-hmm. and kind of compare. Because often you'll know that traffic has come from Pinterest, but you might not be exactly sure what particular pin is driving the traffic. But then I can go over into my Pinterest and I can see that the most popular pin on that particular day was such and such a pin. Right. So it's sort of a process of... Yeah, of kind of bringing the two together mm. and seeing seeing what's happening at the website level and then where that correlates with, with the analytics from Pinterest. Cool. Okay. So we've created the account, we've created the board. Is it creating the pins just as simple as sticking them to boards or is, so you mentioned yeah. the image um, best practice. Is there any other best practice with writing good pins? Yeah. So to upload a pin, you simply just upload the image and then you add a headline and then a description and then the link that you want that to be connected to. And you can pin that to one or multiple boards. Um, Again, we need to think about keywords. We need to think about headlines that are gonna capture people and want that, you know, and make them want more information. The same as we talked about uh, with the images. So it really is as simple as doing that to create a pin and then pinning it to different boards and it will go out into the land of Pinterest and the algorithm. Um, There is great opportunities with Pinterest for pre-scheduling and automating how that happens. And there is a particular program out there that you can use that will also help you to, by reposting the things that are most popular um, over a period of time as well, which can help to sort of the drive the traffic that's happening. Okay, do you mind touching on that last a little bit more what do you mean by yeah reposting? so for i my personal preference for um creating my pins and scheduling them and having them auto posting to pinterest is a a um, platform called tailwind mm-hmm. and this is a platform that basically plugs into your pinterest account and it allows you to create uh pins within tailwind it has a chrome extension that allows you to pick up images across the web Um, And you can also, within there, create a situation where you can loop pins. So the pins that are getting you the best traffic and that are, are, you know, your most popular, you can actually choose to have them reshared out at certain time intervals over a few months so that you're actually continuing to show people again the pins that have gotten the best traffic and seem to be doing well in the algorithm. It also gives you the opportunity to plan your feed quite far ahead. So you can plan, you know, a few months ahead and it gives you the opportunity to repost from accounts that you have followed or uh, people that are sharing pins that will be relevant to your audience so that you aren't constantly only sharing the content that you've created, but you might also be sharing content that other people have created that's relevant to your audience. Mm -hmm. So you can actually like create a pin and the the Pinterest gods are shining on you and, and, and it, it grants you all this traffic and you can sort of fan the fire of it a little bit longer. Is that right? By sort of yes. reposting it. Yes. And you can do that in an automated way so that it's not requiring you to come back to Pinterest every few days or every couple of weeks and create that pin and post it again Mm -hmm. Uh, it has it has the capability of you being able to say repost this pin you know every 14 days you can choose a a group of boards that you would like it to be posted to and it will go ahead and do that for you independent of your activity but what if it's already on that board Uh, so it can be repinned to that board which will send it back out into the algorithm, interesting, which means that it will appear again in people's feeds. Right. So it's like deletes it and then re-puts it back on there. Yeah, it puts it back out into the algorithm. Yeah. And then obviously too, you've got the opportunity to share it across onto your other different boards. And in order for people to put your pins on their board, that's obviously subject to whether 
they want to do that? Yeah, so there's just a really simple hover button that comes up that says pin and they can literally just click on that and then they choose which of their own boards they would like to pin that to. And that tends to be a behaviour that people will do when they're looking for inspiration for particular things or ideas that they will have boards of their own on their personal account that they've created and they'll pin your content onto there. That's really great, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to click through and actually go to your website. What about this whole concept of Pinterest ads? Have you done much in the ad space on Pinterest? Yeah, so I haven't used Pinterest ads myself at all. Okay. I haven't felt the need to. I've had great traffic just doing um, it organically. I know that a lot of people are now moving into this space. It's only been available for around 12 months. Um, and they reckon that they're getting very low cost per click to, compared with something like Facebook advertising. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I haven't felt the need to do it and I would, would definitely say that if I was, yeah, if I was going to give it a try, I would do it in my own business um, and see how it went. But I don't know that it's necessary to do in order to get some good traction through Pinterest. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But where are the ads sort of in the ecosystem? Is it sort of they come up higher in the news feed as they are yes. in Facebook? Okay. It's a similar situation to Facebook where it just gets prioritised in the feed and there's slots in the feed for those um, pins. And with only, you know, a small number of people using those ads, then there's obviously not the competition that there is on something like Facebook for that ad space. And so that's obviously correlating with a lower cost per click at this point. But as people become aware of it as more of an option, I mean, a lot of people don't even really realize that that is an option. Um, then obviously, like has happened with Facebook and Instagram, I would assume that that is going to ex you know expand and the cost per click will probably get higher uh, and more people will start to use the opportunity. Yeah sure it's um if people get success then that that window yeah. closes <laughs> narrowly um or pretty quickly do you know do you pay for an impression or do you pay for a click on there or you probably might not know because you haven't done uh, it if there's multiple ways to set up your campaigns the same as you can set up different styles of campaigns in facebook you can set up different styles of campaigns there and it has similar sort of targeting opportunities so you can target geographically and target um based on their, you know, previous, your consumers' previous behaviours and interests and those kinds of things. So, you know, given your second business that sort of was born off the success of, of your first one, what, um, when you, when people come to you having, you know, let's say got an existing Pinterest account and what are some classic mistakes that you see people make? Yeah, so the first classic mistake is that they haven't changed their account to a business account and claimed their website. So they're not getting any analytics and they don't know if what they're doing is working. Mm -hmm. That's the first um, big mistake. And then secondly, I think there's a really common misunderstanding of the fact that it's actually a search engine and therefore we need to be paying attention to keywords and to what we're putting into the descriptions every step of the way, not just in the pin, but also in the board and in the profile. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anything else or that's it? Um, they tend to be the two biggest, biggest um, misconceptions when it comes to Pinterest and just the fact that it is a search engine rather than a social platform. And so we need to think about it differently. Yeah. Interesting. So I'm assuming if you had your time over again and you were starting your allergy business now, you would now obviously apply these strategies um, if you were to do it, start all over again from scratch. Yes, absolutely. I would definitely, and I would have, I would have started Pinterest earlier in my business because it was a platform I wasn't familiar with. Um, I didn't start it right from the beginning, um, but I still now am running that business and using Pinterest very actively as part of our marketing strategy for that business. Yeah, cool. That answers a lot of my questions, uh, which is great. Thank you. Is there anything that we have not touched on that we should have covered? 
I don't think so. I think we've covered, we've done a really good cover of the basics when it comes to using Pinterest for sure. Yeah, cool. Awesome. So is there sort of one parting advice that you'd give our listeners uh, listening to this about Pinterest? I guess I would just say that if it's something that you haven't considered, then it's worthwhile looking into because it is a platform that you can definitely get your head around and um, it is another place that you can be repurposing content that you're already creating. If you are already regularly creating content for your business, then this is another place that you can be putting that content uh, and another opportunity to get in front of a different audience. Yeah, definitely, especially where there is probably significantly less competition than the big (laughs) platforms out there. Awesome. Uh, Thank you so much for coming on today's show and and sharing your wisdom. For those of our listeners who think, yes, I need Caroline to help me grow on Pinterest and other social media platforms, where can people find out more information about you? Yeah, so the easiest way will be to go to www.socialstrategymum.com. Or you can find me on all of the different social platforms. The handle is Social Strategy Mum. Um, and I'd love to connect with you and reach out if there's anything that I can do to help. I do have a couple of free resources specifically for Pinterest. So feel free to grab them to help you decide whether this is something that is going to be part of your marketing strategy moving forward. Awesome. Well, I've certainly learned a lot about Pinterest from you. So thank you so much. And um, yeah, I think for some of some people that I know in certain industries, I think it's definitely a platform that they should pay attention to. So thank you so much for coming on today's episode and sharing your knowledge. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Thanks so much for listening to the Teach Traffic podcast. For more information on each of these episodes and handy PDFs that you can download, head on over to teachtraffic.com.